this video tutorial has been designed as support material for the practical sessions of the machine learning in biomedicine course of the biomedical engineering degree of University Ceu San Pablo. In this tutorial we're going to see how to run the Python code that is going to be part of the practical sessions. I'll be providing the URL of the GitHub repository where the code is hosted. We are going to run the code online. Running it in your laptops is uh, challenging. It requires a lot of configuration, so we won't be doing that. I'll be indicating through the classes which code you should be working with. The first one is the zero. They are sorted. They still work in progress, so not all the code is ready, but the first lesson is ready. If you open the first code, the introduction to pandas, in a new tab. You'll be able to see the code in GitHub, but what's more interesting is this link over here, which allows you to open it in Collab. Collab is a Google property which allows to execute Jupyter Notebooks online. This is Collab. You'll be able to open this link even if you are not seeing in, into Google, but to actually run the Python code and to modify it, you will need to be logging with a Gmail account. Right now, I'm logging with a Gmail account. If you don't do that, you won't be able to run the code. These notebooks have text explanations that you should read to understand what is uh, what the notebook is doing, and it has code. This is the index. You can jump, for example, inspecting the contents of a data frame, and we jump downwards, or modifying a data frame, data frame, or exercises. The exercises section, it has text, but it doesn't have code. The idea here is that you write your own code to try to solve these exercises to practice what you saw on the practical sessions. However, I also recommend that while doing the practical sessions, you actually modify the code and try new things. If you try to run the code out of order, very likely you will get errors. By default, all the code has been executed. You can see the expected result of running the code. However, if I click this play button here, it's telling me that I need to connect to some uh, environment. I'll be talking a little bit more about the execution environment in a moment. And it's also warning me that this code is not developed by Google. So if I want to run it, I should trust it. If I run the code, I get an error. I don't get the expected result. That's because this line, which is importing the pandas library as PD, was not run first. In general, you'll be needing to run the code in order. You can also just go to runtime and run out the code or run before the code. In runtime, you can also restart the session. If you restart the session, everything gets reset. If the notebook starts behaving in a weird way, I recommend that you restart the session. Sometimes Google Collapse gets in an inconsistent state and you must restart the environment. And as a matter of fact, uh, when I've been working in one of the deep learning uh, exercises, when installing a library, I always have to restart the environment after installing the library for the library to work properly. So if you see weird issues and you may think that there is something funny going on, restart the environment. In runtime, you can also change the runtime. The, the follow one right now is CPU, but you can use GPU or TPU. TPU is tensor processing units, is specific Google hardware to run TensorFlow. You get limited time, execution time, especially for GPU and TPU. They are quite powerful if you use them. They are probably much more powerful than your computer if you are using those environments. But after you consume a certain amount of computing time, Google will force you to downgrade to CPU. And if you attach a lot of GPU, they even throttle you. That said, it gives a quite reasonable amount of computing time for 
teaching purposes, it's quite unlikely that you'll be choosing a data set for your final project that has enough size to actually run out of resources. And even if you run, you just will be downgrade. So it's quite unlikely you have any issues with uh, computing power. If I run the first code and the second code, now I should get the expected result. You can actually modify this document, and I do recommend that you do. This document is made up by text cells and code cells. These text cells and code cells can be created using the, excuse me, insert. Insert code cell, insert text cell. If you insert a text cell, you're just going to write text. This documentation, you probably won't be doing that too much unless you actually want to add some clarifications about something you didn't understood in initially or some notes to yourself. Of course, you could also do that as comments in the code. And if you insert a code cell, you're actually going to be writing code. 2 divided by 4, for example, and you can press Ctrl Enter or click Play and the code will run. You can try to modify my code and as recommended. For example, you may have this example over here where I'm accessing the column apples of the previous data frame. And you may, for example, add code here or add another uh, cell below. I'm going to do it with keyboard shortcuts, Control M below. I'm going to access oranges. Instead, accessing the apples. I have created the variable. I have not shown it in the console. If I go here on the left, by default, these uh, three lines over here are the table of contents. If you go to that curly braces X, those are the variables. Right now, column should be that oranges variables 0372, 0372. Over here, you can inspect the different variables that's the overall data frame. This is just a search and replace facility. This is something we won't be using. This is in the case that you're going to have some API key. We're not going to be using any external API. This is a file system where you may upload files or you may create files. As this tutorial warns you, those files are temporary. When the environment expires, you will lose those files. If you want to keep them, you should uh, save them. You should download them. I recommend that you, when you modified the code, you try to type wrong instructions to familiarize yourselves a little bit with the error. The tutorials I'm going to be giving you, everything works, everything goes fine. As soon as you start trying to work, you write your code, you will get errors. You'll have to fix those errors. So it's a good idea to understand what type of errors you're going to get if you, for example, misspell the name of a column. Using this button over here, I can remove the different uh, cells. In the case, I created some temporary cell with some temporary code. If I go, for example, loading and saving files, this sentence over here, I just copy that and create a cell above. You can do all these things I'm doing with the insert menu if you prefer, but I prefer to use keyboard shortcuts. That cell over there will save the DF data frame, this data frame over here, to the file system. If I click the play button or control enter, this code runs and if I refresh the file system, I see the sales.csv file. And if I care about this file, if this file is, I've been doing some pre-processing of my data set and I want to store it for later, I should download it. If you don't download it, when you leave inactive the Collab Notebook for a little bit, the 
runtime environment will expire and eventually the files will also get deleted. Especially when you work on the exercises, but even you may decide to modify it or add something to the code I provide initially, but especially when you work in the exercises, you will want to create a copy of this notebook in your own Google Drive. If you go to File and click Save a copy in Drive, you'll be saving a copy of this notebook in Drive and that'll be stored permanently. If you are editing the notebook as I'm doing right now, this will be lost when you leave the URL. So you need to actually save it if you want to have a permanent copy. And this the basics. Uh, with this, you should have enough to start going through these uh, Python practical sessions.